Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to my honest opinion or thoughts on the Summer Games Festival 2022. Um, there was a lot of fucking games uh, <laughs> announced for this uh, Summer 2022 Games Fest. It was over a two-hour long show, so let's get right into the first one, which is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Uh, sorry, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the reboot, which is... Strange, I'll just have that playing in the background. So this is obviously not Modern Warfare 2, which is going to be a little bit saddening and disheartening for a lot of people, because I know they remastered um, model, or Modern Warfare, and I believe they've also remastered Modern Warfare 2. So right now we have about, I think, six to eight Modern Warfare. So we have um, Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare, MW2, um, MW3, and we also have uh, the reboot that came out in 2019, I believe, which is called Modern Warfare. And now we have this. So uh, that's not going to cause confusion in the marketing, <laughs> which it already has for me personally. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy. But I feel like the problems with this game is just going to be like the, the naming, honestly. Other than that, like, you know, like the, the trailer was mainly just like look at our graphics, at least from what I saw. Um, kind of slowed down. It looks great. Um, I hope the gunplay is gonna be good. Um, I'm not too worried. It's it's a Call of Duty game. Thankfully, Microsoft has slowed down from what I'm understanding. Um, with the Call of Duties, especially now, <laughs> especially like a lot of people, you know, a lot of us grew up with Call of Duty, love them or never touch them, and feel like they're rehashed. Whatever your opinion is of the game, they're good games. Um, I just really hope that they, you know. Now that they're not coming out uh, annually and more just giving more development time and giving people to breathe, I guess you could say, um, it'll actually be like good quality games. But yeah, other than that, like the, the sights look good. The gunplay looks fun. Um, something that really like stuck out to me in the trailer was like the dynamic levels inside this. Like, um, I don't know if I could show it here, but like kind of or later on in the level, there was like um swaying with the crazy yeah, right here so there was basically swaying um your environment was moving which is really cool with the unreal 5 engine but i believe it's an unreal i'm not too too sure uh, i doubt it but yeah it was just an interesting level design choice i know they're going to be bringing back ghosts and price and soap and lots of fan favorites from this series but yeah my biggest concern right now is just confusion with the branding which shouldn't be too much of a problem people are going to buy it it's call of duty um, moving on, because we have to go, go quick. <laughs> There's a lot of game. Is the introduction of... Uh, introduction. There's been a lot of talk about this game. A Callisto Protocol. Um, this is just a passion project from Dead Space. I believe I talked about this at the Sony State of Play. I think it was shown. But they showed more gameplay of it. Um, this game looks raw. <laughs> Sorry about that. But, uh, no, it looks fucking scary lots of scary games this sony or sorry this uh, i'm dunked out this uh summer games fest lots of good scares fun stuff for people to get their shit seared out of and cry all that fun stuff um the game looks beautiful thankfully gameplay looks good it does not look clunky there hasn't been any sort of like overstanding like issues that i've had with it this is gonna definitely be a call for me the death animations look insane very excessive well. yeah just like that um sorry i said mute i was sorry if that hurt anybody's ears but yeah that was been uh, callisto i think the the, the brand is gonna be on weird with that too because like Callisto is such a weird fucking name, but that's just my opinion. I don't fucking know. Uh, new Street Fighter character, Guile. Um, I'm not the biggest Street Fighter fan, so this has been cool, I guess, uh, for all y'all Street Fighter fans out there. But it's it's okay. I mean, like the, a lot of people are raving about like I'm seeing online, just like the cool redesign. Guy looks so cool. Can't wait for the next character gameplay. Guys, see you, please. I can't read, but yeah, I think that's also Street Fighter Six is gonna land 2023. I don't know if there's an official, official month on that, but there was also a four-player co-op Alien game. There's been some pretty good Alien games, like Alien Isolation, to my most recent recollection, and there's been some pretty bad ones. Um, love them or hate them, this was released. I don't think they showed a lot of gameplay. Graphics look good, just a common trend this Games Fest. 
Um, but I believe it's top down. So, I mean, if it is a top down game, that might be an automatic snore or snooze fest for me. I'm not. That doesn't really feel appealing to me. But, um, uh, I mean, we need more co op games. There hasn't been a good four player co op game, so I'm always excited for that. I'm always welcome to it. Um, the next game is something that I believe is i'm just gonna kind of skip ahead here oh jeff keely um yes witchfire this one looked really good the gameplay looked really like fast paced and the movement looked very mobile like sort of i, I want to say doom-esque and like i, I like the side swipes so, like there's gonna be sliding really yeah like right here magic and guns in a sort of medieval setting it looks fun like it has this dishonored art style almost um, I'm really interested in this game. I could definitely can't fucking wait. Moving on to the next game, though, because... Oh, see, he just did a little... I didn't even notice that in the trailer. Right? He did a little uh, cross thing with his hand. That's really cool. But no, yeah, I'm definitely going to be looking out. That's 100% cop. A lookout for Witchfire, which I believe is coming out. I don't know if there is a release date. I think there was one around here. I can't find it. Well... It's coming soon. <laughs> uh, look that up if you're interested. Witchfire. Definitely a fun game. Um, moving on, though. Flashback. This looked like a sort of... Oh, this was a return of like a 30-year-old game. I never played it. Uh, Flashback 2. I, I guess a lot of people have nostalgia for this game. Even Jess Keeley on stage said that he, it's one of his personal favorites from a game that he played. Not really something that will appeal to me, but anybody who has played that... Definitely keep a lookout for that. Um, Soul Hacker 2. Now, this one, I think, was just an anime game that kind of showed a brief little teaser trailer. Yeah. Um, it could be Fire. Uh, they didn't really show a whole lot. Look out for that later this year in, like, a few months. Not my kind of thing, but, you know, it could be. This one will look good, though. That was a, I'm oh, sorry, that was a really quick cut. <laughs> I just skipped on to one to another. My attention span. But no, uh, I mean the, the One Piece game. I feel like this could be a very slept on game. Like this could be some low key heat. I've watched like maybe, I don't know, fucking 700 episodes of One Piece and I just dropped it at some point. I, I don't know how, I think they're on like 110 at this point, 1020 or some shit, but definitely going to be a fun game from the looks of it. I mean, for all the One Piece fans out there, Anime games, like, not the Naruto games and the Dragon Ball Xenoverse games and stuff like that. They can either be a hit or miss a lot of the time. They can either be, like, Insane Fire or just a cash grab. But uh, I like the art style. Definitely kind of, like, gives me... I don't want to say Persona vibes, but the 3D slash kind of cell shaded. It, it looks good. Um, Not a cop for me, personally. Maybe, like, an on-sale thing. Maybe somebody gets it for me. I might, like, just play it when I'm bored one day if there's nothing out. Them booty pirates, man. Um, the next game is Humankind. I think this is just a newer sort of Civ Sim like simulator kind of game where you just kind of like these games never interested me. I'll be honest with you. These like sort of war, sort of top down. I I guess through the ages type game. Maybe if I played with a friend, if I versed someone, I might be more interested. But I've never really given a chance, so I can't really like say much. From my understanding, it just kind of looked meh. Like, it's out. Like, it's for all those people out there. This one, Super People trailer. Uh, from this trailer, they just kind of, like, showed off the trailer. It's, like, it's not really any gameplay. It just everyone was pretty. That's all I got from it, honestly. There was just, like, you know, cool stuff here, cool visual CGI. That's really what I got from it, but it didn't really look too, like... I, I don't know about this game. I <laughs> I don't know. Um, new Battle Royale. Okay, so if you guys are interested in a cool sort of, I guess, character-based or hero-based Battle Royale, you know, Overwatch does it, Valorant does it, League does it. We all like our hero-based sort of shooters. League's not really a shooter, but still. Um, If it's free-to-play, might give this a try. Not my cup of tea, but... I mean, hey, it's a battle royale. It's probably going to sell. Who knows? Um, The next game. This one looked... Okay, this trailer was good. The music in this. 
I will say this summer games fest is the soundtracks of these fucking games have been beautiful for the trailer. Like it's just been banger, banger, banger. So I cannot tell a lie. This game it, it did pique my interest a little bit. Definitely because the soundtrack. Um uh, I'm just trying to skip to the gameplay here to kind of like really remember key moments. I mean, other than the music and the pretty trailer, uh there's nothing that really stood out to me. Combat looks kind of zippy, I guess. But if you're into Welcome to New Eridu, go for it, man. Buy it. But, oh, this one. Okay. Saints Row, um, I feel like is a, you know, jokey version of GTA. Everybody kind of knows that at this point. But the newest one obviously has not come out yet. But I feel like this is a really good sort of PR move is you can download it to just try the character creator just to make whatever. Because this is like really thorough, really in-depth versus like GTA's sort of, I don't want to say bare bones, but GTA 5's character creator is very like minuscule when it comes to something like this where it's like you just make whatever you want. Like you can be a freak. You can be construction worker. You can have a tinfoil hat on your head. You can look like you're going to market your in your underwear. Um, I definitely feel like streamers are going to get in trouble for the nudity that the character customer user is going to make. I'm sure there's going to be an option for that. So, yeah, I mean, that could be fun to just download it and dick around in that. But um, this game, was this the Genshin Impact game? No. I, I think this was the anime game that had some pretty good... Yeah, she had some good soundtrack. S voice acting in this one. This game had some... Yeah, but no. Um, this is definitely an anime game that I would be interested in. The the voice acting sound pretty good. Gameplay and visuals look pretty cool. Uh, I can definitely see this interesting a lot of people. I don't know how the sales are going to be for it. No, not really my kind of thing. Warframe, though. I know got some new um, release for DLC that's apparently been on the works for it. <laughs> on stage, the 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 person who was representing it, she seemed super excited to show it. Um, a lot of people, I'm sure, love Warframe. I know a lot of people who love it, uh, like fall in love with the game, have a lot of positive things to say about it. But uh, I'm giving it a try. It's it's okay. Um, not really a game for me. I know the story is good. Gameplay's fun. Constant updates and um support for the game which is always a good thing to see that always brings life um the next thing is midnight fight this game okay yeah this one also really good soundtrack i want to say that this game kind of gave me like this really weird like sort of hotline miami and i keep trying to think of another game yeah just a very like hotline miami-esque game it gives like sort of bleh, bleh. The music's getting me distracted. Like, very action-y vibes. Looked fun, bloody, gory, action-y. Level design looked unique from place to place. Um, yeah, this looks fun, yo. I would definitely play this. If this is, like, a $10, $20 game, I 100% would pick this up. I know I'd have a blast with this. I, like, I love how my Miami, like, I love the music that it has. So, yeah, I mean... Uh, Fight Express, I forgot when it released. Maybe they'll have a... August 23rd, so it's, like, right around the corner. 100%, yeah, like, I don't mind picking that up. Uh, hey, the next is Cuphead. I just love the art style of Cuphead. That's obviously one of the main appeals for it, and a lot of people do. Um, I think that this one, add, this DLC, it will add three-player co-op. I don't think they showed too much gameplay of this, or they talked about the Netflix show that was canceled, I believe. They just kind of like talked about the game and it was just a lot of talking. It was like very minute details, less witty banter, whatnot. Just Game Fest bullshit. Game looks fun. I can't wait for the three player co op DLC. Look out for Cuphead, June 30th. So definitely have my eyes set on that. This one was cool Marvel's Midnight Suns. So I know that there was an original one, I believe. This is going to just, like, bring the Marvel Midnight Suns universe and then just put it into a game, hence the title. I don't know. They didn't show too much gameplay, but the graphics look pretty. Characters look dope. Obviously, they have Spider-Man and... Hold on. I think I can just kind of zip to the end here. They have this your boy Spidey. They have 
all your fun characters like uh, Ghost Rider. And let me just skip right here to this trailer or part of the trailer. Um, yeah, I don't know who that is. But Blade, Ghost Rider, um, Spider-Man's lots of fun shit. Graphics look pretty. Definitely going to be a fun game. Uh, that last Avenger game, I did not hear good things about it, but the Spider game that released on PS4 is good, so hit and a miss. We'll see if this is a good superhero game. Fingers crossed. Um, I know we saw Venom earlier in the trailer, and then we'll see you here in a second just come out as this fucking crazy looking monster insane looking definitely excited for that and then they bring out hulk as like the crazy end and there was obviously a little reference to the spider-man 2 movie if you ever watched that as a kid um <laughs> this trailer was pretty funny so if you're a dead island fan you'll remember i think dead island 2 I believe it was, or one, I'm not sure. But they had this, like, man running around a, a boardwalk or along the beach uh, in Venice Beach, I believe. This is San Francisco. But a lot of people thought it was going to be the next Dead Island game, which has not been announced or shown. Nobody has a Dead Island game for like, almost 10 years now. And then I guess Goat Simulator came out with this. This is a little bit of a troll. And this is just a little Goat Simulator, like, haha, funny DLC. I didn't even know there was a fucking third one, yo. I sorry, I didn't even know there was a second one. I, I remember my friend fucking platinum trophied that shit on my account. I, I've played Goat Simulator before. It's a funny game. Um, <laughs> I don't have any issues with it. I didn't even know there was a second one. I know people still played this game. Nah, I stepped in the dookie and the new kicks, man. That sucks. But uh, yeah, if this is your type of game, I mean, have fun with Goat Simulator, my man. <laughs> Yeah, so go Slimator 3. Keep your eyes out for that. And obviously in co-ops, if you have more friends to go around. Um, oh, this one, American Arcadia. This one looked like a sort of like... For your life. Oh, sorry, my bad. The music or the volume is too loud. Check. It looked Make like a, city where technology and a sort of retro top-down storytelling game. I like the art style for this. I just... I feel like it's it's similar to that other one that we saw, the sort of Hotline Miami like top up shooter game. Like level design looks diverse. Um, art design definitely looks unique. Sound design I'm sure is phenomenal for this type of indie style game. But uh, yeah, this looks like a cute game to just kind of like lend someone who, who loves indie games, loves just kind of like minute storytelling, just pick up a game and go, you know what I mean? So this looks fun. Um, Metal Gear for that guy, kind of like the Truman Show. I, I guess I can't really see if anyone's positive or negative about it. I just see memes. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I wouldn't mind playing this. This looks like a cop for me as well. Um, the next one is called This Is High Water, which I believe yeah, this is another one of those like indie game trend style with the last three back to back to back games where. We've seen it just like an indie style, sort of cell shaded and like the lighting's pretty. The art style is unique. I mean, it's just gonna be short storytelling. From what I understand, it looks like you know like a fun twelve hour, like eight hour game, where you just kind of sit back, enjoy the story, and just kind of chill out. I I like this. This is cute. It it looks pretty. Um, I don't have much to say about it. Fuck my ears. The sound. It looks K. <laughs> Can't really say more than that. Uh, Stormgate. I know that there are people who've been waiting a fucking long time for this shit. I think. Oh no, this is never mind. This is just another top-down game. They showed the visuals off. It looked pretty. Um, I mean, it, I'm not really a big top-down shooter type guy. I think it's an RTS. Uh, founded by veterans of Stark. Okay, yeah, so. Eh, I will, I will look at gameplay, and then I'll hold my judgment till then. But for now, it looks kind of okay. I'm not too holding my breath on it. But I, the character looks cool. If I feel like there's a character I like, I'll definitely be more compelled to play a game. So, we'll see. Uh, other than that, it's just a cinematic trailer. Nothing too crazy. Uh, Outriders World Slaughter Co-op. 
trying to remember. It was a two-hour gameplay reveal uh, show. Sorry, <laughs> my memory's a little fuzzy, but... Oh, yeah, this is just another four-player co-op shooter. That's, like, the second one or third one in this show so far. So, like, yeah, they, they've been, br like, bringing up the heat with a lot of that. Like, I, we need more games where you can just all, like, have, like, a quick setup match with you and three other friends. And you all just kind of, like, see how far you can go versus, like, a challenge or wave of enemies. I've, I love horde games. I love Payday 2. I love um, Left 4 Dead. There's lots of... I feel like there's not enough games like that. I, I could be just, like, talking out of my ass. Because there is Killing Floor 1 and 2. And there is... um. Fuck, there was that one game, the the Left 4 Dead remake, uh, Back for Blood, I believe it was called. That came out recently. But other than that, yeah, man, there's not been too many. So, gonna be looking forward to that. Maybe I'll pick that up with some friends. Routine. This one looked trippy. There has been some really fucky horror games and reveals this Summer Games Fest. Like I said earlier in the video, this is the one, like one of the ones that looks like I'm gonna be scared. Yeah, look at the comments after. But the visuals look beautiful. Like, look at the lighting. Stunning, stunning stuff. Just skip ahead in the trailer. But, yeah. um, It gives me, personally, this, like, sort of alien isolation vibe, especially with the art style and the graphics. The lighting also kind of feels similar. I don't know who is making it. Routines are... By Lunar, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, sort of. It also has that 80s uh, style. I believe Ripley Scott, the, the Alien Isolation game is also set in the 70s or 80s. Yeah, no, this game is fucky. Definitely going to shit my pants playing this. I am 100% going to be playing this game at some point. This looks phenomenal. Releasing for everything, thankfully. Um, this, okay, this game. This one was a lot more interesting because... I feel like in this day and age, we have reached a point where we are way more engaged with voice actors. And when I see like a reoccurring, like I see Troy Baker or the guy who voiced, I fuck, I'm running a blank. Um, the guy who voiced Arthur Morgan and obviously Red Dead Redemption 2. That was one of his first voice acting sort of careers i believe is sort of dip into the video game market and this is like his second game from what i understand and it's very like engaging with the acting and like when i see people like that where i'm like okay these are familiar people i know who they are i feel more engaged with the game like it makes me a little excited and i know that i'm because at that point it's real performances they have the mocap suit they have the facial tracking it's real performances i'm I really want to keep my eyes open. Yeah, George Clark. Sorry about that. I believe he's Scottish, so he's a very nice voice. <laughs> Obviously, Troy Baker does too for lots of his amazing performances like Last of Us and Uncharted 4 and tons of other games. Really talented guy. So, yeah, they kind of walked on stage, and it was weird seeing the voice actors actually talk about the game. Like, they're excited for it. Like, that's not something that's very common in gaming and i'm starting to see a trend with that so it's really cool to see how it's like the median of gaming is switching from just like voice acting kind of being like an afterthought to like they are like the main voice like they are spokespersons like they're the main voice of the game they're representing it they're celebrities so it's like yeah i i, I can't wait for fort solace it's gonna be a fun narrative game this was probably this showed at the end and end of the summer games fest it was probably the highlight for me personally they showed off the last of us 2 multiplayer reveal which if you are the fan of the first last of us multiplayer phenomenal multiplayer really fun gameplay unique that you cannot get in any other shooter loved it the style of crafting and like sort of um accessibility or customization when it came to making classes and skills and weapons fun stuff Unfortunately, they didn't release a multiplayer with with Last of Us 2, which made a lot of people upset, but finally they're releasing it and they worked on it. And I know there's a little bit of a story to it with unique characters and dialogue and all that fun stuff, but they also released, as you can see from the title, is a Last of Us remastered. Oh, it doesn't show. And more. It doesn't show. Awesome. So they're remastering Last of Us 1. I know that they're reconstructing a lot of facial animations. Um, oh, shit. That's a little bit of a spoiler from what I was talking about, but... Uh, 
No, they they reconstructed a lot of the facial animations. They tried their best to kind of, um, I guess, re kind of configure the cutscenes to make it look like Last of Us Part One. I don't know why I can't find it anywhere here. Uh, hold on a minute. Sorry, I'm gonna just cut ahead. Yeah, here it is. But um, yeah, no. They showed off a lot of stuff, and it's like. Just The Last of Us Part 1 is one of my top uh, 20 games of all time. Beautiful game. It's such a good story. Like, it is a very good story. Like, it very it's a very impactful story. If you haven't played Last of Us, I suggest you play it. It's one of the most just, like, engaging stories in gaming. Characters are great. Storytelling, pacing, gameplay. Might feel a little dated graphically for the time, but I know that the that naughty dog dev on stage with troy baker and i forgot who the other actor is obviously plays ellie in the last of us i took a lot of time kind of reconstructing the faces and just making the gameplays revamped and it's basically he said there's a lot of limitations when there was making last of us part one and they've finally been able to get over that hurdle making the last of us Sorry, my Last of Us Part 1 remaster, implementing a lot of the things that they took from the second Last of Us and implementing into the first one, making for a very definitive experience what they wanted to do for the PC players and PlayStation 5 players who haven't experienced that or someone who just is revisiting old memory lane and just wants to feel that nostalgia because Last of Us is a nine-year-old game. Usually we don't see remasters for games that are like you know it has to be usually 10 years plus because you know a lot of technology innovates and it's like graphical limitations ends up cutting a lot of things and now they can finally fulfill their full vision and of the game just kind of like uh, final fantasy 7 for example this is an example of that people love last of us ps3 was innovative for its time but it was at the end of its life cycle when they did make last of us and they kind of just cut to the ps4 era if they did make last of us for ps4 i'm sure a lot of gameplay and a lot of like sort of design choices would have been more accessible to them instead of the limitation that they had to sort of dumb it down for last in consoles which is unfortunate but it is kind of the console curse when it comes to that stuff because you were locked into that hardware but it also is a good thing because you are locked into the hardware so you can only need to configure for one sort of spec regardless the other amazing thing is they're having a blast of a netflix series which is great we've seen a lot of awesome stuff like witcher and um fuck there's another one arcane um and I'm, I'm sure there's other ones that i'm just not thinking about uh maybe the warcraft movie but yeah there's been lots of like really good sort of video game uh shows that have been coming out which i i, I liked it i liked witcher i can't wait for this definitely gonna watch it big fan of last of us um yeah i i can't wait for the first one to come out on pc i'm definitely gonna do a replay of that hopefully on this channel i might do it with my make my girlfriend play with while i'm with her so that'd be a surprise for you guys um i have something special in store for that so keep an eye out for last of us part one which i think is coming out 2023 Ooh, the, the gameplay trailer is a little bit later Corey, okay Quarry is, uh, I believe, made from the people that also made the Dead by Daylight games. I like these games. I know that there was a bigger emphasis on, from what I saw on um, comedy, I guess, uh, than the Dead by Daylight games. I love these games. I haven't played all of them, but I have a very strong feeling for Dead by Daylight in my heart because it's just one of those games that, I, you know, I kind of just was with the ps4 at the time when it was releasing so i played it a lot it's a fun game it's very interactive and i 100 percent would not have a doubt in my mind that this is going to be just like that but thankfully more uh more comedic which i like i'm always welcome to that and i mean from my understanding look i didn't even know there was co-op i'm learning that now this is the official gameplay trailer this wasn't even in the fucking uh, summer games fest Fantastic performance from that guy's face. Expressive. I fucking can't wait. I didn't even know there was multiplayer with that. Now I'm definitely going to be able to play it. Or definitely going to. Um, Helsing. Okay, so this game utilizes its gameplay with... Ignore the, the man on the screen. <laughs> utilizes its soundtrack with its gameplay. So if you sort of reload on B, if you swipe, choose the sort of like B to the like game... 
Sorry for raving, you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me put it lower. But yeah, you can see how he, like, the music is kind of keeping in tone with the gameplay. So anytime he sort of swipes or dashes to the left or um, just kind of shoots to the music and the hit beat of it, he'll do more damage. Or It's just, like, I, you know, at least this is where my understanding of it is. That's what I can see what they can do from a gameplay standpoint, which I think is very innovative and creative. I, I can't. I don't know any other games do that, like, fucking inside of a rhythm game but this doesn't seem like it seems like a rhythm game that's a shooter which yeah i'm gonna play this this looks fucking fun the soundtrack sounds amazing um fucking when 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 is now on oh there's a demo does he go play the demo on pc ps5 i'm gonna try this demo this is gonna be a fun game i i hope the gameplay looks good um, moving on though, Capcom Arcade 2. Yeah, this one looks fun. If you were like a fun or, or a fan of the Capcom games back in the days, yeah, man, they are uh, releasing about 32 addition, uh, additional 32 arcade classics to Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and PC later this year. Uh, this is also furthering my point of games as a service finally coming to fruition from our past. Always talking about that is more and more people are going to these sort of you pay like a monthly subscription. At least this is my understanding of it. I think it's a Capcom monthly subscription and you just kind of get a whole slew of games or it's just its own thing. Uh, Stadia is bringing an additional classic to the Nintendo. Oh, it's just its own game. Okay, so yeah, you're just going to be playing your own game and then have a, a whole list of games. Okay, never mind. Then I'm talking Cap. Ignore me. <laughs> yeah, no, I... I love retro games, um, but like we have emulators now, guys. Come on now. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, that's going to be cool to play on the Switch, like on a fucking flight. You get to play like old Street Fighters games. That's fucking dope. Yeah, no, this is awesome. I'm definitely going to... If I had a Switch, I would 100% play this. But uh, yeah, this is more just the last of us one gameplay. Just to kind of show you guys again how much of a phenomenal game it is. I'm going to stop fanboy. <laughs> Uh, they also showed Layers of Fear. Oh, no, this is Gotham Knights. Okay, yeah, no, Layers of Fear was a little bit later in the show. Gotham Knights, unfortunately, no Nightwing booty in this. Like, the viral tweet. Sorry for all you Nightwing thick, juicy peach enthusiasts. Um, I think they showed gameplay in this trailer. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a Batman fan, but this is not going to be for me. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able... I'm going to play this... I've never played any of the Batman games. Maybe I'll play them on this channel at some point. Who knows? But, like, I have them. I've just never really been interested. Oh, look, he has the Fortnite um, glider. <laughs> I know combat looks flashy. Customization looks okay. People had some gripes with the UI when it first released because I think it was just a placeholder. Um, I know it's going to be co-op, which would be cool. I, I know I would love to play the original Arkham Knight games in co-op. I'm always welcome to more co-op games. But, uh yeah no oh poor bruce wayne it's uh it's a it's a maybe for me it's a meh we'll, we'll see if this game is gonna be good or not i'm sure it will be it's just uh no this one is gonna be fun this was warhammer 40k they do amazing cinematics for this game <laughs> they do amazing cinematics for these games the gameplay is fun it i know the original warhammer 40 game was a four player search like beat em up hack and slash game with you and your friends this is more of like a modernized metal sort of grungy version of that with guns instead of medieval uh fuck yeah like i'm i'm so hyped for this i am a big killing floor fan like i said um payday 2 um just any sort of four player co-op hack and slash sort of like rounds type of game i'm this is gonna be fun I uh, cannot wait for this. The weapons look interesting, especially a fucking saw blade, just like in the Warhammer universe. But other than that, I think the last game on our list is Nightingale, which was shown a last year, a few months ago, I believe. Sort of like a survival. <sighs> Sorry, excuse me. Sort of like, fucking, I've been talking for 30 minutes. <laughs> sort of like a survival um, co-op multiplayer game. Where there's waves, I believe, like every, I don't know if it's like seven days or it's like every seven days you get like the, the monsters come through the portal and attack you and your base and see how well you're defended. And obviously there's perks with cards, I'm guessing. I don't know little about this game. Uh, it looks okay. Um, 
they showed uh, chopping a tree and base building earlier on in the trailer, if I can skip to that. Um, yeah, like right there. I like base building. I like survival co-op games. I love Conan. I love Seven Days. I'm sure this game will be a game for me. I'm sure a lot of people will pick this up. Lots of funny moments in this, so... Yeah, keep a lookout for Nightingale. Other than that, I think that's it, guys. Thank you so much for listening to me talk my bullshit about this Summer Game Fest. My honest opinion about it. A lot of Some sleepers, lots of creative games, um, lots of goodies. Can't fucking wait for a lot, especially Last of Us. That's going to be fucking good. I cannot wait for that. There's even pre-order content, so go on, get yourself a Last of Us. Please don't pre-order. Pre-ordering's bad, but get yourself a Last of Us remaster copy, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.